Good morning and welcome. The Congressional Black Caucus Foundation welcomes you to the ceremonial swearing-in of the 118th class of the Congressional Black Caucus. At this time, we ask that you take your seats, silence your cell phones, and make note of your nearest exits. The ceremony is about to begin. Ladies and gentlemen, the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation Incorporated proudly welcomes you to the ceremonial swearing-in of the Congressional Black Caucus of the 118th Congress. Please welcome to the stage today's Mistress of Ceremonies, host of Simone on MSNBC and on Peacock, Simone Sanders Townsend. Oh, greetings and welcome, everyone. Now, you all can do better than that. Who is excited to be here? Yes, my name is Simone Sanders Townsend. I am pleased to be your MC today, and I would like to welcome you to the ceremonial swearing in of the Congressional Black Caucus of the 118th Congress. This morning's ceremony both celebrates and honors new and reelected CBC members before their friends, family, constituents, and some special guests. I would like to take the time to acknowledge some of those special guests right now. There are a number of former members of the Congressional Black Caucus present. Uh, Kendrick Meek, I believe, is here. Cedric Richmond, G.K. Butterfield, and of course, the 18th Secretary of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Marsha Fudge. We have a number of elected officials across the country who are also present today. Thank you for being here with us, as well as a number of administration officials. I, I see a number of my former colleagues in the building. Uh, in addition to Secretary Fudge, I do believe that the Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights, Kristen Clark, is here for, at the U.S. Department of Justice. In addition to that, I believe Reverend Jesse Jackson is also with us today. As well as the presidents, many presidents of the Divine Nine. A number of people have come out to, to celebrate this momentous occasion, and it is a, a, a privilege of mine to serve as your MC today. This is an accomplished group of leaders. The Congressional Black Caucus has continued to do the very critical work of advancing the agenda of the black community, from education to health care to economic development to addressing racial disparities across our country to reforming our nation's criminal justice system. The members who will soon take this stage, they've all worked to build a more just society. Shortly, you are going to hear remarks from some of the nation's most influential leaders. I'm talking about voting rights champion, Representative Terry A. Sewell. Give it up. Also, the incoming minority leader of the House of Representatives, also a CBC member, Representative Hakeem Jeffries. And Housing and Urban Development Secretary Marsha Fudge, who is the first black woman in decades to helm that agency. We are also going to hear remarks from the immediate past chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Representative Joyce Beatty. Beatty. And of course, we're going to hear from the incoming chair of the caucus, Representative Stephen Horsford. So with that, let the ceremony commence. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 57 incomparable men and women of the Congressional Black Caucus of the 118th Congress. Representative Eleanor Holmes Norton, District of Columbia. Representative Maxine Waters, California, 43rd Congressional District. Representative Sanford D. Bishop, Georgia, 2nd Congressional District. Representative Sanford D. Bishop, Georgia, 2nd Congressional District. Representative James E. Clyburn, South Carolina, 6th Congressional District. Representative Bobby Scott, Virginia, 3rd Congressional District. Representative Benny G. Thompson, Mississippi, 2nd Congressional District. 
Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, Texas, 18th Congressional District. Representative Danny K. Davis, Illinois, 7th Congressional District. Representative Gregory W. Meeks, New York, 5th Congressional District. Representative Barbara Lee, California, 13th Congressional District. Representative David Scott, Georgia, 13th Congressional District. Representative Emanuel Cleaver II, Missouri, 5th Congressional District. Representative Al Green, Texas, 9th Congressional District. Representative Gwen Moore, Wisconsin, 4th Congressional District. Representative Yvette D. Clark, New York, 9th Congressional District. Representative Hank Johnson, Georgia, 4th Congressional District. Representative Kwise Mfume, Maryland, 7th Congressional District. Representative Andre Carson, Indiana, 7th Congressional District. Representative Terry A. Sewell, Alabama, 7th Congressional District. Representative Frederica S. Wilson, Florida, 24th Congressional District. Representative Donald M. Payne, Jr., New Jersey, 10th Congressional District. Representative Joyce Beatty, Ohio, 3rd Congressional District. Representative Hakeem Jeffries, New York, 8th Congressional District. Representative Mark Vesey, Texas, 33rd Congressional District. Representative Robin Kelly, Illinois, 2nd Congressional District. Senator Cory Booker, New Jersey. Representative Alma Adams, North Carolina, 12th Congressional District. Delegate Stacy Plaskett, Virgin Islands. Representative Bonnie Watson Coleman, New Jersey, 12th Congressional District. Representative Dwight Evans, Pennsylvania, 2nd Congressional District. Representative Lisa Blunt Rochester, Delaware. Representative Stephen Horsford, Nevada, 4th Congressional District. Representative Colin Allred, Texas, 32nd Congressional District. Representative Johanna Hayes, Connecticut, 5th Congressional District. Representative Lucy McBath, Georgia, 6th Congressional District. Representative Joe Neguse, Colorado, 2nd Congressional District. Representative Ilhan Omar, Minnesota, 5th Congressional District. Representative Ayanna Presley, Massachusetts, 7th Congressional District. Representative Laura Underwood, Lauren Underwood, Illinois, 14th Congressional District. Representative Nakima Williams, Georgia, 5th Congressional District. Representative Cory Bush, Missouri, 1st Congressional District. Representative Jamal Bowman, New York, 16th Congressional District. Representative Richie Torres, New York, 15th Congressional District. Representative Marilyn Strickland, Washington, 10th Congressional District. Senator Raphael Warnock, Georgia. Representative Troy Carter, Louisiana, 2nd Congressional District. Representative Chantel Brown, Ohio, 11th Congressional District. Representative Sheila Surfalis McCormick, Florida, 20th Congressional District. Representative Jasmine Crockett, Texas, 30th Congressional District. Representative Don Davis, North Carolina, 1st Congressional District. Representative Valerie Fouché, North Carolina, 4th Congressional District. Representative Maxwell Frost, Florida, 10th Congressional District. Representative Glenn Ivey, Maryland, 4th Congressional District. Representative Jonathan Jackson, Illinois, 1st Congressional District. Representative Sydney Kamlager Dove, California, 30th, 37th Congressional District. 
Representative Summer Lee, Pennsylvania, 12th Congressional District. Representative Amelia Sykes, Ohio, 34th Congressional District. Ladies and gentlemen, the 57 members of the Congressional Black Caucus of the 118th Congress. going for the members of the Congressional Black Caucus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is historic. I do not think people truly understand first that this is the first time that this event has taken place at the Anthem in this building and that the members that you see standing on this stage, they truly are the conscience of the Congress. Legislation does not move without the members of the Congressional Black Caucus. It seems to me y'all are fired up and ready to go, so please join me now in welcoming to the stage award-winning gospel artist Charles Butler, Jr., who will lead us in the singing of the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, and with that, please also stand to your feet. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmony Of liberty Let our rejoice Dark past has taught us Sing a song Full of the hope that the present has brought us Facing the rising sun For a new day be Okay. 
Welcome, Pastor Kelsey West, Senior Pastor, Nehemiah Ministries, Las Vegas, Nevada. Amen. Shall we pray? To the only wise and true God, whom Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob called Yahweh, and to the same God whom our grandparents called a bridge over troubled water and a shelter in a time of storm. We lower our heads and lift our hope as we collectively celebrate not our constitutional but our congregational freedom to come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may maximize this momentous moment to shout with the voice of triumph in response to how you have protected, prospered, and positioned each of these representatives upon, across, and throughout this congressional chessboard. Thank you, Lord, for always ensuring since the days of Moses that we, being your people who are called by your name, had fearless and faithful leaders who could not only lift their arms in battle, but who could courageously tell sheet-wearing and card-carrying and even baseball-bearing pharaohs that you said, let my people go. And because this generation, like the last generation, is still telling the next generation to take it from me someday, will all be free. I'm therefore praying this prayer to you, God, and boldly beseeching you to strengthen the hands and hearts of these 58 members, new members, and the eyes and ears of its new officers and chair of this 118th Congress so that they, like Moses, can tell the modern-day Pharaohs and Philistines and Pharisees that you said, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. And should you in return during this session harden the hearts of those who are still upset that our vice president is a pink and green sister from the Howard University, please, sir, equip this caucus to go back and tell the pharaohs of this world that you said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. And should you, Lord, during this session harden the hearts of those who are still upset because they're storming the Capitol with hate, could not stop you from storming this country with love. Please, sir, 
equip this caucus to go back and tell the pharaohs of this world that you said no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall be condemned. From this day forward, may this anointed and appointed army of divinely drafted democratic disciples not only see themselves as more than conquerors and as a righteous reflection of your holy heart, but may this Congressional Black Caucus, caucus know and understand that they have a right, a reason, and a responsibility to remember that this caucus was built on the belief, and I quote, that black people have no permanent friends, nor permanent enemies, just permanent interests. Now, Lord, let me not waste this opportunity to personally say thank you as I conclude this prayer as you have smiled on us as you revealed your favorite song on last year. For when our backs were against the wall and Pharaoh had us staring at a raging Red Sea, your great love towards us was not hard to find when the votes revealed you had Georgia on your mind. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated, everyone. Please take your seats. I am told that this is uh, Representative Horsford's pastor. That's the kind of sermon y'all will get on a Sunday morning in Las Vegas. Somebody say amen. amen. What a very powerful and timely message. Well, with that, we are going to give a very warm and enthusiastic welcome to the president and CEO of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, Nicole Austin Hillary. Good morning. Now, I don't know about you, I was always told not to follow someone like the pastor, uh, but I'm going to do my best. Uh, I am Nicole Austin Hillary, and I am the president and CEO of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, and it is my sincere, thank you members, it is my sincere pleasure to welcome you to this historic ceremony. It is indeed a celebration, not only of the achievements of the men and women who take their sacred oath today, but also of the achievements of our foundation. Our mission has been to advance the global black community by developing leaders, informing policy, and educating the public. And that we have done, and we continue to do this through an abundance of Congressional Black Caucus Foundation programs that address every public policy issue affecting black communities, and we do that with research and education. Now, some of the members of the Congress that we recognize this morning are actually beneficiaries of those programs. They have grown and developed through their participation in our CBCF activities, and we are so proud of them, and we are proud of what we have accomplished, and we, too, take an oath today to continue our work, to rededicate ourselves to the fight for social justice, and to cultivate the leaders who will carry that fight forward as long as it takes. Now, we can all look back with pride on everything the Congressional Black Caucus has achieved in its first 50 years. And in the past two years, in the historic 117th Congress, we all know that serious challenges lie ahead. Some of those challenges we can foresee, and others will no doubt surprise us. But these members of the Congressional Black Caucus are better positioned than any in history to meet those challenges. And with our amazing CBCF team, for whom I am so grateful, we are here to support their efforts in deep and lasting ways. And leading us in this work and in this support is the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. It is now my honor and privilege to introduce her to you, the representative of the 7th District of Alabama, the Honorable and the Incomparable Terry A. Sewell. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Congresswoman Terry Sewell, and I proudly serve as chair of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. And we are so honored today to host this amazing ceremony. Every two years, we come together. We come together to swear an oath 
to support and defend our Constitution and to ensure that it protects and empowers all Americans. Today, we renew our pledge to fight the disease of racism that continues to plague our nation, to correct inequities in health care, criminal justice, education, voter access, and so many rights and benefits that are part and parcel of what it means to be an American. We also rejoice in our commitment, our unity, and yes, our power. Never has the Congressional Black Caucus been better positioned to move our colleagues and our nation forward on a path towards justice and prosperity for all. As chair of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, I rejoice in the unwavering support of the CBCF, the Board of Directors, and the many members of Congress who make up our caucus. I would also like to thank the Corporate Advisory Council, chaired by John Mason. These men and women from the executive suites of some of America's greatest companies and organizations generously share their expertise and guidance to work to craft public policy and to advance our mission. I also want to thank our many sponsors of today. They deserve a round of applause for allowing us to gather here. Today, we also celebrate and welcome the new voices joining the Congressional Black Caucus. They are a critical part of our work. Now more than ever, we need the new energy, the new ideas of our nine new CBC members who will continue to move us forward. With these new members, the CBC will be 58 members strong. From a core of 13 founding members, only one of which was a woman, Shirley Chisholm, in 1971, we have grown over the last 51 years to 58 members strong. Yeah. Now we know that we stand on the broad shoulders of giants imbued by their courage, vision, and purpose. We are now a powerful voting bloc and elect presidents, and now our first African-American to ever lead a party in Congress. We are some bad sisters and brothers. We are some bad sisters and brothers. We in the CBCF are proud. We in the CBCF are proud to work with the CBC in continuing our mission to advance the global black community through our leadership institute, scholarships, and internships, and the, of course, our annual legislative conference, and countless other programs that we in the CBCF continue to offer. Now, I wouldn't be an a, 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 the chair of the CBCF if I didn't say that we couldn't do this without the generous support of so many. So I invite all of you to visit the cbcinc.org, our website, to find out more about the CBCF. Now, you know, we are in a critical moment in our nation. During this moment of transition, we know that some things never change. Among them, our unity, our strength, our fellowship and our collective efforts to all of us to nourish and maintain our power. We welcome your support and help in this endeavor. As the conscience of the Congress, the members of the Congressional Black Caucus embrace the responsibilities of leadership with good faith, great faith in the future and in one another and in our representation of the people. We thank all of you, especially our family, friends, allies, and partners in this fight. It is because of your support that we can soar. So once again, on behalf of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation Board, it is my pleasure to welcome you and to thank you for being here. Now, it is my distinct honor to introduce someone who really needs no introduction. I am so honored to introduce the leader of the House Democratic Caucus, None other than the, the, the honorable gentleman who represents the People's Republic of Brooklyn, <laughs> the
the representative of New York's 8th Congressional District. He is battle-tested, having led this caucus during a global pandemic and an insurrection of the Capitol. He is a skillful strategist, a master communicator, a pragmatic progressive, a visionary legislator, a civil, a, a criminal justice reformer, a dogmatic defender of democracy, a hip-hop chairman, aficionado, and a fierce, fierce fighter for our families, children, veterans, dreamers, workers, and our seniors. Please rise to your seat as I introduce the minority leader, the Democratic leader, the Democratic leader of the House, of the House Democratic Caucus, and our next and future speaker, the Honorable Hakeem Jeffries. Thank you, Terry, for your leadership and for your incredible words of introduction to Chairwoman Joyce Beatty, Whip Clyburn, incoming Chair Steve Horsford, Secretary Fudge, members of the CBC, our family and friends, all those assembled, good morning. Good morning. It is a high honor and a distinct privilege to stand before you today as we begin the 118th Congress. Thank you, Joyce for an extraordinary tenure as chair of the CBC. You led, you led with grace, dignity, strength, intellect, power, and delivered an incredible set of accomplishments for black America and the nation. Without question, Joyce Beatty was one of the most effective chairs of the CBC in the history of the caucus, I'm Hakeem Jeffries, and I approve that message. <laughs> I also want to congratulate my other good friend and classmate, Steve Horsford, on your ascension to the lofty position as chair. Steve is an incredible leader who will take the baton from Chair Beatty, and along with the other executive board members, continue to move the CBC forward in phenomenal ways on behalf of the people we are privileged to represent. Congratulations, Steve. Throughout my journey in this institution, I've had the opportunity to hold a handful of titles. Representative, DPCC co-chair, impeachment manager, chairman, and now leader. But there is one title that will always be incredibly close to my heart, member of the Congressional Black Caucus. It is an incredible affiliation that I will carry with me throughout my public service journey, from beginning to end, from start to finish, from alpha to omega. And I say that as a proud Kappa man. The CBC is a family filled with phenomenal public servants. We all stand on the shoulders of giants like Adam Clayton Powell Jr., Shirley Chisholm, Lou Stokes, Barbara Jordan, John Lewis, Elijah Cummings, Eddie Bernice Johnson, Bill Gray, and of course, the Honorable James E. Clyburn, who we know, who we know is a good man, a family man, a hardworking man, a visionary man, a well-educated man, a community man, and a mighty man of God. Jim Clyburn, a son of the South, preacher's kid, raised in a parsonage, civil rights champion, mentor to many, enlightened historian, majority whip emeritus, and savior of our democracy in the 2020 presidential election. Thank you, Jim, for all that you represent. I'm proud to stand on your shoulders. The founding document of this country, the Declaration of Independence, states, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equally and entitled, of course, to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
These words were eloquent in their articulation, but incomplete in their application. As the great Barbara Jordan once powerfully laid out for America. Our community's journey in this country has been a turbulent one. From slavery to Jim Crow, Jim Crow to mass incarceration, mass incarceration to a malignant narcissist in the White House. Wickedness in high places. But through it all, our community is still standing. God didn't bring us this far to leave us. Over the last half century, one of the reasons our country has made such tremendous progress is because of the principled patriotism and unyielding advocacy of the Congressional Black Caucus. Now, as Democrats, we will continue to advocate as we move forward in this new Congress for lower costs, better paying jobs, safer communities, defend democracy, fight for freedom, protect the public interest, and ensure economic opportunity in every single zip code. And as members of the CBC, we will continue to be the conscience of the Congress and advance an agenda anchored in jobs and justice. The CBC, defenders of the disenfranchised, the CBC, a voice for the voiceless, the CBC filled with powerful, profound, principled public servants. And because of the leadership of this great Congressional Black Caucus, I'm confident that here in America, the best is yet to come. Congratulations, God bless you, God bless the CBC, and God bless the United States of America. Please welcome to the stage, Representative Catherine Clark of Massachusetts, 5th Congressional District. Good morning. I cannot think of a better way to start the 118th Congress and 2023 than being here with the CBC. Thank you. It is an honor to be here with you. And I want to thank my friend and outgoing chairwoman, Joyce Beatty, for her tremendous leadership over the last two years. So many of our accomplishments from the previous Congress would not have been possible without her guidance, her commitment to progress, from the infrastructure law to public safety, voting protections, and gun safety reforms. And I look forward to working with incoming chair Stephen Horsford, first vice chair and my cousin, Yvette Clark, <laughs> second vice chair, Troy Carter, Secretary Lucy McBath and Whip Marilyn Strickland. Today marks a new beginning for House Democrats. We will stand shoulder to shoulder to protect our economy, our planet, and the fundamental right to vote from which all of our freedoms flow. And let us mark this moment of history through the chaos, the racism, the healthcare disparities, the economic oppression that we have seen, emerges Hakeem Jeffries as our new leader of the Democratic Party. <laughs> I am so proud and honored to be part of a leadership team with Leader Jeffries and that includes CBC members James Clyburn, Joe Naguse, Lauren Underwood, Barbara Lee, and our newest member, Jasmine Crockett. <laughs> House Democrats are ready to speak up and fight back. And I am thrilled to have Representatives Terry Sewell, Sheila Jackson Lee, Colin Allred, and Marilyn Strickland serving as my Chief Deputy Whips. The voices of the CBC have always pushed our caucus forward to include the perspectives of communities of color and fulfill America's promise of equality and justice for all. And we will look to the CBC more now than ever 
With your talent and experience, and the CBC is our moral comp compass, we will stop the Republicans' dangerous agenda. We will take back the House and our shared values. And we will continue to lift up all communities that, and stand together to oppose those who want to lead with discrimination, denigration, and division. So here we are, on the verge of the 118th Congress, here with the CBC, the promise for our future, building on the history of our past. I am so honored to be here, so honored to get to work with my colleagues in this caucus, and I look forward as we move together to secure our democracy and freedom and justice for all. Thank you for having me. Another round of applause for the Democratic leader of the House Democratic Caucus, Representative Hakeem Jeffries, and the Democratic Whip, Catherine Clark, who is, my understanding, only the second woman to serve in that role. Are y'all still out there? You know, members, I think, I think people are just a little shell-shocked by the power on this stage. I think that's what it is. Well, it is now my honor to bring someone that, again, also needs no introduction to the stage, someone who famously said, I am not about sound bites, I am about substance. The former representative for Ohio's 11th Congressional District, the 18th, Secretary of the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, Secretary Marsha Fudge. Thank you very, very much. You know, I'm nervous. I, I, I miss my colleagues so very much. Not that I want to join you, but I miss you <laughs> so much. Maya Angelou writes these words. Here on the pulse of this new day, you may have the grace to look up and out and into your sister's eyes and into your brother's face, your country, and say simply, very simply, with hope, good morning, good morning, good morning. CBC. Good morning. It is my absolute pleasure to be with you all, and it is so nice to join other uh, senior members of the administration. I believe Keisha Lance Bottoms may be here, um, who was the senior advisor. Senator Richmond, I have to recognize my friend uh, who served in the White House for the first uh, last two years. I want to thank the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, the President, of course, Natalie Austin Hillary, my dear friend Terry Sewell, the Board of Directors, and the entire leadership team. Congresswoman Beatty, my homegirl, I congratulate you and thank you for your outstanding tenure. You led this great body in a great way. You led with grace and with fortitude, and we are forever grateful. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I congratulate you as you take the helm of the caucus at this critical time. You are more than ready for this assignment. Because you know there are only certain ones of us who are prepared to serve at such a time as this. As a former chair and member of the Congressional Black Caucus, I take great pride in administering the oath of office this morning. For more than 50 years, the Congressional Black Caucus has been the conscience of the Congress the moral center that ensures that the people and communities whose blood, sweat, and tears built this country are never forgotten by this storied institution. That black people, people of low means, and those who have been marginalized or pushed aside will always have a voice, Mr. Leader. CBC, I do not know if we have ever needed you more than we need you now. We need you to be that sure and steady voice for the voiceless, to guarantee that the people of this country are never silenced, never again cast aside or forgotten. I am confident 
that you will begin this 118th Congress grounded by the generations of activists who fought for justice and equality. CBC, I need you to unleash your power to make real the promise of democracy. For you may be the only thing that stands between democracy and anarchy. We need you to energize a movement that will change the, horse, the course of history as only you can. Spring up a well of strength. Be immovable like the tree planted by the rivers of water. Give birth again to the dawn here on the pulse of this new day. Congratulations, my friends. Congratulations. It is now my privilege to deliver the oath of office. I ask that you stand, raise your right hand, and repeat after me, saying your name after I say, I. So, I. I. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely and without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. God bless you. Thank you so much. See you soon. And now, please welcome the 27th chair of the Congressional Black Caucus and representative of Ohio's 3rd District, Congresswoman Joyce Beatty. To my newly sworn in colleagues, my friends, my family, and to all of you gathered here today, Thank you, U.S. Secretary Marsha Fudge, for swearing us in and giving us a little crimson and cream. <laughs> to all of those who are gathered here today, I say thank you and good morning. This day is always special, but for me today, today's swearing in is particularly meaningful. It's been an honor to serve as chair of the Congressional Black Caucus for these past two years. And what a couple years they've been. Working together with the Congressional Black Caucus leading, we made the 117th Congress one of the most productive in recent history. But the 117th Congress started with being confronted almost immediately with an unprecedented threat, not only to our own safety, but to American democracy itself. But with faith, common sense, and the help and courage of law enforcement, staff, and so many other people, we not only faced the attack of January the 6th, 2021, we overcame it. Because this is our America, an America that we continue to lift our people out of bondage. We are the single most effective caucus articulating, representing, protecting, advancing the interests of black people. We are the voices and the authors of pieces of legislation enacted into law affecting all Americans, representing virtually every corner of our nation and everyone, including the 18 million black Americans we serve in 80 
Americans that the Congressional Black Caucus serve. And when I say every area, I mean just that. Think about it. Housing, education, health care, income assistance, transportation, prescription drug prices, gun safety, clean air, protection for women, veterans assistance, combating climate change, voting rights, and so much more. But not only that, after more than a hundred years of striving, this was the Congress that finally passed a law lynch making lynching a federal crime, the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. And it was this Congress that made June 19th a federal holiday with Juneteenth's Independence Day Act. It was this Congress that passed the Respect for Marriage Act requiring that interracial marriages be recognized along with same-sex marriages throughout the United States. And yes, it was this Congress that made sure the American Rescue Plan included billions of dollars for predominantly black institutions of higher education. Love my HBCUs. Yes. It was this caucus that let a little black girl from Ohio negotiate a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. And let us not forget, it was this Congress that was not content through the attack on our persons and our beloved institution, the United States Capitol, two years ago. No we decided that we would pursue justice. So we launched an investigation under the leadership of a bad black brother, the Honorable Benny G. Thompson. a bipartisan effort to identify and hold accountable the people ultimately responsible. It's impossible to imagine a fair, more thorough, more even-handed inquiry into one of the most horrifying episodes in our history. And yes, we completed it in the 117th Congress. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Today, to my Congressional Black Caucus colleagues of the 100th, now 18th Congress, I say thank you for letting me serve as your chair as we change the world. We were there from Selma to Sierra Leone. We were there, six black Americans, serving the nation as chairs. Six gavels, six icons. Maxine Waters, Eddie Bernice Johnson, Bobby Scott, David Scott, Gregory Meeks. We were there, Katanji Brown Jackson, justice in the highest court of the land. We were there, first black man to chair a congressional party. My friend, my classmate, my confidant, no other than the Honorable Hakeem Jeffries. And to a new generation of members, thank you for joining us in taking today's oath. There is no harder working group in America than you. Let's give them all a round of applause. Thank you. And lastly, to our beloved friend and colleague, Congressman A. Donald McEachin of Virginia's 4th Congressional District. He passed away just over a month ago. And we want to pay tribute not only to his many accomplishments in public service, notably his fight for environmental justice, but also his attention to health care 
and to his own affliction in advocating for expanding access to health care for all. We will continue to miss him, but I'd like to ask us to honor him now with a moment of silence. Thank you. And now the moment that we've all been waiting for. We close the books of the 117th Congress. We recognize that we still have a lot to do. And we pledge to you, our sponsors, our friends, our family, and the nation, that we will keep pushing till we get it done. And we only got it done because there were so many of you. And to the past chairs, and to people who mentored me, James Clyburn, thank you for pushing me to take this honor. Cedric Richmond, thank you for encouraging and believing in me that I could do this. Marsha Fudge, thank you for being with me the entire way. I promise you I'll keep pushing and I'll keep fighting as we embark on this second half of the century with the largest congressional black caucus in the history, our power, our message. And now I pass the torch. I pass the torch to a brother that came into Congress with me, a brother who is steadfast in his commitment to people especially black people. A black man that is so strategic that when you sit down with him, you know he's gonna pull out that iPad and start giving you an assignment to do and a long-term plan and a short-term goal. And that is just what we need at this time. I am so honored and comfortable to say, please join me as we welcome the next chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, the gentleman from the 4th District of the State of Nevada, and my good friend, the Honorable Stephen Horsford. <laughs> the trusted gavel that for two years I've called the Congressional Black Caucus into session. And tonight, I say, meeting adjourned. I present to you, Stephen Horsford, Chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Well, you know, when Representative Beatty said she didn't want to dwell on the accomplishments of the past two years, she was being very modest. Who do you think it was leading the Congressional Black Caucus through these troubled waters of these times and accomplishing all those great things? It was Representative Joyce Beatty of Ohio. So thank you, Madam Chair, for your courage, your leadership, and your grace under pressure. You're an example to us all, and I cannot say thank you enough for your service and for everything that you have done to lead the Congressional Black Caucus and to make the difference and the impact that we have made. With that, I would like to present our chairwoman with a recognition from the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation and to congratulate you for your impeccable service as the 27th chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Congratulations, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you.
51 years ago this week, 13 black members of Congress founded the Congressional Black Caucus. These leaders knew then what we know today. The work of our caucus is vital in building up the black community in ways that ensures that we are not left out, left behind, ignored, or passed up. Today, 57 members of the Congressional Black Caucus start the 118th Congress. This is our opportunity to advance the mission, the vision, and the goals of those 13 founders and the 166 black members of Congress who have served in both the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. In our nation's 246 years, the laws and policies of our nation did not always favor black Americans. From the earliest slaves brought across the ocean to the black soldiers who fought in the Revolutionary and Civil Wars, to those who braved the earliest fights through Jim Crow and Reconstruction. From the Tuskegee Airmen and Henrietta Lacks to the brave frontline workers in the COVID pandemic. In the work we do, we honor our history. Like the many black members that served before there was even a, a Congressional Black Caucus. While several of our earliest House members had been born into slavery and lived as slaves, only one person in the Senate brought that experience to that body. Senator Blanche Bruce served in the United States Senate for one term as the senator from Mississippi. Before coming to the Senate, he worked as a steamboat porter on the Mississippi River and established a school for black children in Missouri. He was the first African-American to complete a full term in the Senate and the only former slave to have presided over the United States Senate. Now, I am sure that Senator Bruce from Mississippi was beaming with pride to witness Chairman Benny Thompson lead the select committee on the January 6th attack of our nation's capital. It is that legacy and the legacy of African Americans who have served in the Congress that we continue to fight for and whose shoulders that we stand on today. From a slave to the Senate, each of us have come to this Congress serving in our own unique way, but none of us got here alone. So to every spouse or partner, family member, friend, and volunteer, thank you for sacrificing so that each of us could serve. We appreciate you all very, very much. I am so honored to serve as the incoming chair and to work along a dynamic committed group of officers of the executive board, as well as the 57 members of the CBC, and the leadership that is represented among our members, including Assistant Democratic Leader Jim Clyburn, Steering and Policy Co-Chair Barbara Lee, Democratic Policy and Communications Committee Chair Representative Joe Neguse, and Co-Chair Representative Lauren Underwood. Our four full committee ranking members, Representative Benny Thompson, Bobby Scott, Maxine Waters and David Scott, and the Democratic leader, my classmate, Representative Hakeem Jeffries, who will make history as the first African-American speaker when we take back the House in two years. And also to our new members and Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett on your leadership post, congratulations to you and to the nine new members. To the Democratic Whip, Representative Catherine Clark, thank you for your leadership and support and for being in attendance today. And of course, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Marsha Fudge, who is a past chair of the CBC, thank you for administering the oath to our members and for always being a close confidant and advisor to me and to so many who have benefited from your guidance and your leadership. To my friend, former colleague and mentor, Cedric Richmond, and Director Emeritus of the CBC Foundation and former member, Kendrick Meek, for all that you do to support new leadership and for your continued work on behalf of the CBC. To Pastor Kelsey West from Nehemiah Ministries, thank you for being a strong community leader 
and for your prayers without ceasing that you and your congregation and the coalition of pastors that convene every single month in my district. To my family, two of my three children who are with me today, Bryson, who is a sophomore at North Carolina A&T, go Aggies. And my daughter, Ella, a high school sophomore who is working to change the world in her own way. And my oldest son, Benjamin, who is unable to be here, he is coaching and working back in Las Vegas. Uh, but I just want to say your mother and I are so proud of the people that you are and that you've grown into talented, smart, and loving individuals. I am so proud to be your father, and I love you very much. Now, some of you may have heard that my mother, who just earned her citizenship and became a voter just a month ago, she's an immigrant from Trinidad. Unfortunately, she had heart surgery over the holiday. And while she may not be here in person, she told me before I left home to know that she is here in spirit. And I'm grateful for her love, her support, and her example of perseverance that she has shown to me and others, including my two sisters and brother, who are with her as she has a full and speedy recovery. Thank you to all of you who have sent your prayers, because each of us faces challenges even in the midst of the work that we do in public service. Thank you. It has already been said, but the last Congress was one of the most productive and the benefits of the legislation that we passed, led by members of the CBC, will continue to be realized in the months and years to come. Just this week, the provision to cap the amount that seniors pay for prescription drugs at $2,000 and capping the amount that seniors pay for insulin at $35 it went into effect. This legislation was led by the late Elijah Cummings and others and is now law thanks to the Congressional Black Caucus and President Biden. Because of efforts led by members of the Congressional Black Caucus Task Force on Black Maternal Health, we are protecting black moms and improving maternal health outcomes. To that end, thanks to provisions passed by this Congress, most states now have to expand postpartum Medicaid coverage from 60 days to one year. That was the Congressional Black Caucus. The CBC is working to ensure that all Americans, and especially black families and communities, can live with dignity, safety, respect, and achieve greater economic opportunity. The CBC has met with President Biden and talked about our shared priority around racial equity and justice. And I look forward to building on these efforts in the 118th Congress as we ensure racial equity and accountability throughout the federal government and in the private sector. For generations, entrenched disparities in our society and economy, at times facilitated by the federal government, discriminating policies, and unaccountable institutions have made it harder for black Americans to have a fair shot. Centuries of injustice and decades of disinvestment by black communities not only undermine the American promise of equal opportunity, but it also keeps our entire nation from reaching its potential. The Congressional Black Caucus has worked to eliminate these inequities, and we will continue to lead in these areas of racial equity, opportunity, and justice in very intentional and purposeful ways in the months and years to come. Thanks to leaders like Representative Barbara Lee on appropriations and my colleagues in the CBC on Ways and Means, we pushed for the historic expansion of the child tax credit, cutting child poverty to record lows for black children, and helped 17 million workers without dependent children, especially frontline workers who benefited the most. Through the advocacy of Representative Maxine Waters and the CBC members on financial services, we helped black Americans stay in their homes by providing emergency rental assistance. Of the $25 billion that was provided in 2021, 
black Americans with, were the largest group that received help, representing more than 40% of the aid. That is the Congressional Black Caucus. It was the Congressional Black Caucus that fought to create a set-aside for small businesses through support from the CDFI, credit unions, and small banks to make sure that they weren't left out or left behind so that they could also rehire and retain workers. Because of the leadership of Representative Bobby Scott and CBC members on education and labor, we created pathways to the middle class, especially for people from underserved communities. By expanding skill-based hiring and increasing access to registered apprenticeship and workforce training. And because of the leadership of Secretary Fudge, the Interagency Task Force on Property Appraisal and Valuation Equity released the PAVE Action Plan, the most wide-ranging set of reforms ever put forward to advance equity in the home appraisal process. That is the Congressional Black Caucus. <laughs> Federal procurement is one of our most powerful tools to advance equity and to build wealth in underserved communities. But only around 10% of federal agencies' total eligible contracting dollars even go to small and disadvantaged businesses, a category under federal law for which black-owned businesses are presumed to be eligible. That's why the Congressional Black Caucus will push the Biden-Harris administration to meet their goal of increasing the share of federal contracting dollars to disadvantaged businesses by 50% by 2025. That's $100 billion in new money to minority-owned businesses. And finally, for years, politicians talked about investing in our national infrastructure. But thanks to the Congressional Black Caucus and the leadership of Chair Beatty and our committee chairs and leaders Jeffries and Clyburn, the infrastructure investment and jobs law is passed and it is being implemented. And make no mistake about it, it was the members of the CBC that made sure that that bill passed. Why? Because we know that the lack of investment has fallen most heavily on black communities and under, other underserved areas. That's why we fought to secure federal investment to replace 100 million lead pipes in homes and 400,000 lead pipes in schools and daycares to increase access to training and good quality jobs, to expand affordable high-speed internet and reliable public transit and clean drinking water, to reconnect black neighborhoods divided by legacy highway infrastructure, and to provide other resources to finally give black communities a fair shot. We need we need not look further than the crises in Flint, Michigan and Jackson, Mississippi to know what that kind of neglect to our infrastructure can cause. The, the law invests $1 billion to help reconnect communities and another $3 billion through grants to advance transportation projects in places like Atlanta, St. Louis and Detroit. The law permanently authorizes the Minority Business Development Agency for the first time since its inception and elevated the agency head to the position of undersecretary, granting that agency expanded power to support black and other minority-owned businesses. And now my fraternity brother, Don Cravens, uh, is leading that organization and with the Congressional Black Caucus will make sure that those investments reach every black community throughout this country. And now, EPA, which is led by the first African-American man that the CBC helped to support, has announced that it is allocating $3 billion in infrastructure law funding for lead service line replacement in 2022 alone. And the USDA launched an equity advisory commission, which advises the secretary by identifying programs policies, systems, structures, and practices that contribute to barriers to inclusion or, or access. These are the type of strategic investments and policies the Congressional Black Caucus have advanced. And while we lost one of our great champions on climate action last month, the legacy of the work of Representative Donald McEachin 
and others on natural resources and energy and commerce to address the climate crisis will continue to remain a priority for the CBC. I want to conclude by starting, by ending where I started, and that is with the story of Senator Bruce. Because we know that when we embrace that blessed title, the conscience of the Congress, just like the former slave who became senator from Mississippi, we each have a calling to lead at this important time, to be reminded by the reason that we got into this profession to begin with, and to know that it won't always be easy, but that the people who we represent, they are counting on us. And I know it can be tough and that sacrifices will be made along the way. I know because I know what it's like to lose an election. But I also know, as Representative Greg Meeks reminded us during his nominating speech for Leader Jeffries, a setback is nothing but a setup for a comeback. <laughs> and that is our charge for the next two years, to win the day, to win the week, to win for the American people and the 80 million constituents that we represent. 18 million black Americans who are counting on us to be their voice for change and action and to produce results that will make their lives better. We've been working for more than a half century to make America the best version of itself, improving the legislation that comes out of this body no matter who the speaker is later today. We will make sure that the Congressional Black Caucus is heard making sure that legislation positively impacts the lives of black families, from our youngest children to our wisest seniors. That will be our guiding motivation. That work goes on, and I'm so thankful for the opportunity to play a part in it, and I'm deeply grateful for the support of my colleagues and for the strength of all of our people to help make certain that the American dream is within reach of us all. Thank you so much. Congratulations to our new members, to our officers. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Another round of applause for the immediate past chair, Representative Joyce Beatty, and the incoming chair, Representative Stephen Horsford. I am certain that under Representative Horsford's leadership, the Congressional Black Caucus will continue using the full constitutional power, the statutory authority, and the financial resources of the federal government to ensure that black people all across our country, that other people of color all across our country have a seat at the table. I have personally seen firsthand the work of the people on this stage. Representative Beatty said she ticked through everything of the accomplishments and said that the Congressional Black Caucus was there. Let me tell you, they were not just there, they were influential. In many instances, they are in fact the reason. So when you go back to your communities across the country and the people ask you, what, why, what, what does the CBC do? Why are they so important? What exactly have they accomplished? I hope that you take the nuggets and the gems that you gleaned from this program today because the Congressional Black Caucus is absolutely doing the work. And I look forward to every member on this stage coming on my show to answer the very hard questions because there's some things we need to know about. Before I turn this program back over to the CEO and President of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, I want to again recognize Reverend Jesse Jackson. 
Reverend Jackson, please stand. When we talk about icons and leaders and individuals who have paved the way for not just the people on this stage, but the first black president of the United States of America, Jesse Jackson, Reverend Jackson, is that individual. Thank you very, very much, sir. We are honored to have you with us today. Mrs. Jackson is also present. Mrs. Jackson, very good to see you. You see, I take my cues from all the members of the Congressional Black Caucus, okay? It has been my esteemed pleasure to serve as your MC. Again, congratulations to the members. Congratulations to you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Leader. And uh, I look forward to working with you all in the coming days and weeks. It is now my esteemed pleasure to turn this program back over and welcome back to the stage Nicole Austin Hillary, the president and CEO of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you, Simone. Now, before we let you leave, for those of you who are veterans of coming to this auspicious ceremonial swearing in, you know that we do not let you leave without some amazing musical performances. So before we give you our closing remarks, I would like to bring to the stage Mr. Charles Butler, who will grant us uh, a performance this evening to ensure that we send the members off in the right way to get started on the work of the 118th Congress. So without further ado, Mr. Charles Butler. Break. All right, can we put our hands together? Let's go, come on. Everybody clap your hands. Yes, Lord, yeah. All right, if you know this song, I need you to sing it as loud as you can. Right here. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. All right, let's sing it again. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Come on, every praise, every praise, it's to our God. All right, let's be a big choir. Say every praise, every praise is to our every word of worship. Come on, every praise, every praise is to our God. Yes, he is. 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 Y
she is. Yes, she is. All right, put those hands together. Come on. I'm excited about what every everything that's gonna happen in the new year. Let's sing it. To every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. It's to our God. All right, can you put your hands together? Thank you so much, Mr. Charles Butler, for that amazing and anointed performance. I want to close this always inspiring event with some important thank yous and a few words to pay tribute to the accomplished and trailblazing men and women of the Congressional Black Caucus and in recognition of this important moment. You know, for us at the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, it is a privilege to be a part of supporting the work of these members. We extend our gratitude to the individuals, companies, and organizations who support us in doing this important work. I would like to express our great appreciation to the sponsors for today's events. Our title sponsor, FedEx. Yes. <laughs> our platinum sponsors, Philip Morris International, Tunica Biloxi Tribe of Louisiana. Our gold sponsors, American Beverage Association, American Cancer Society, Cancer Action Network, Genentech, Yahoo, and Micron. And we would also like to thank the numerous silver sponsors and our committed friends like you who supported this momentous occasion. So please, let's thank them all. Their support helps us put our mission into action to cultivate new leaders and to spearhead efforts in our communities across the nation towards economic empowerment and civic engagement. We envision a world in which we all, in all communities, have an equal voice in public policy, a goal towards which the Congressional Black Caucus has been working for more than half a century. Now, in a moment, you will hear from one of the amazing supporters who help us to do this critical work that we do each day, our title sponsor, FedEx. But I quickly would like to take a moment to just reflect on this historic day and this time that we are in and the role the Congressional Black Caucus has played and continues to play in making this nation hold true to its promises, those promises of equality and justice for all. That is also what we are here to celebrate and honor today, lest we forget it. We thank the members of the Congressional Black Caucus for their tireless work and to you, our partners in the fight for justice as we continue to march forward in our work to empower the black community. And now it is my honor and privilege to welcome to the stage Gina Adams, Corporate Vice President for Government and Regulatory Affairs with our title sponsor, FedEx. All right, I'm closing us out. So thank you, Nicole, and good morning. Leader Jeffries, feels so good to say that. Uh, Whip Clark, Assistant Leader Clyburn, Congressman Forsberg, Congresswomen Sewell and Beatty, my sisters, Secretary Fudge, current and former members of the Congressional Black Caucus, distinguished guests, and of course, all the foundation staff who carry out its laudable purposes every day. I've had the distinct privilege of observing and sometimes speaking at this ceremonial swearing in of the CBC in past years. And I'm immensely proud of FedEx's recurring role as title sponsor for this wonderful event. We salute you, support you, try to emulate your efforts, and with other Americans, look to your leadership at this pivotal moment in our history. For 52 years, the Congressional Black Caucus has worked tirelessly to ensure that the American dream 
is accessible, affordable, and viable for African Americans and all other marginalized and underrepresented communities in this country. This work is a responsibility and a task whose importance has grown exponentially in recent years as we've realized that the prize and the peril for our democracy is that we all have a voice. But we must somehow find enough common ground now to acknowledge our differences and engage constructively about them, however great the divide. For these reasons, your charge going forward is a vital one and will rely on you to help us all stand in the light. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me and my proud colleagues from FedEx in congratulating all the new and returning members of the Congressional Black Caucus and the new congressional leadership. Thank you so much. And now, please welcome back to the podium, Representative Terry A. Sewell, Chair of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation Board of Directors. I just want to say that it's so important that we not only acknowledge the hardworking and accomplished members of the Congressional Black Caucus, but we also must recognize our staffs who work so incredibly hard. And with that in mind, I also want to make sure that the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation staff understands how important they are to what we do each and every day. Can we please give the wonderful staffs of our members, as well as the CBCF, a round of applause? As the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, I want to again thank you all for joining us for this auspicious occasion. To the nine new members, will you please stand so all of us can acknowledge you. I say to you that you are embarking upon an experience of a lifetime and know that we are all, all of the returning members are here to help you all. I also want you to know and suck in all of the, the, the glory, the faith, we come from an awesome people, and we get to represent them in Congress. It is indeed a huge responsibility that I'm sure each of you will not take lightly. Thank you for our nine new members. On behalf of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, I also want to uh, welcome you to, to this evening's reception. We have a reception with our members. I want to remind the members that at the conclusion of this program, we will take a picture. So we want the members to stay seated and we will all take a picture. And I want to also remind us of the amazing work and legacy of the people that we stand on, the shoulders of which we stand on. I want to leave us all with the words of the longest serving members. The former representative of the 30th District of Texas, the Honorable Eddie Bernice Johnson, former CBC chair and first African American woman to chair the House Science and Technology Committee. EBJ once said, the Congressional Black Caucus is one of the world's most esteemed bodies with a history of positive activism unparalleled in our nation's history. The CBC has fought for years to protect the fundamentals of our democracy. Its impact is recognized throughout the world. We are a family, a family of freedom fighters. A family of freedom fighters. Yes. To the freedom fighters of the CBC, we say thank you for the hard work that you're doing now and that you've done over the last 51 years in educating, legislating, and advocating and inspiring the global black community and future leaders, future African-American leaders yes. in every field and in every endeavor. May we also take to heart 
as members. The words of the late John Lewis. Yes, he said we must get into good trouble. But he also infamously said, when you see something that's not right, that is not just, we have a moral obligation to do something about it. My sisters and brothers, in this fight, this fight for our people, this fight for advancement, I say, let's get into some good trouble. Thank you for all joining us this morning. And this concludes the program. Thanks again to our sponsors and all of our wonderful supporters. Thank you. CBC members, please remain in your seats for the CBC class photo.